Chapter 2 of Fossils Preserved in Stone We know that fossils are usually excavated from layers of rock. But how did they get there? The material surrounding the fossil didn't start out as rock. In fact, most fossils were formed underwater or in places where the ground was wet and soft. The process of fossilization begins when a plant or animal dies and is quickly covered up by layers of mud or sand. Let's take a look at an example of how this happens. Fossilized footprints tell us that this desert was once a soft, wet swamp. Becoming a fossil. Some 200 million years ago, a shallow ocean covered what is now California. A fish living in the ocean died and sank to the bottom. Before another animal had a chance to eat it, the fish was covered by a thin layer of sand. Over time, layers of sand and mud piled on top of the fish's body, burying it deep under the ocean floor. The skin and soft parts of the fish decayed, leaving only the skeleton behind. To become a fossil, a fish would have to be quickly buried before any other marine animal tried to eat it. Some of today's deserts were once covered by oceans and lakes. A skeleton is fossilized after spending millions of years under the earth. After millions of years, there were many, many layers of sand covering the fish. The pressure from the upper layers was so great that the lower layers hardened into rock. The bones of the fish were trapped inside the rock. As water seeped through tiny cracks and spaces in the rock, it dissolved minerals in the fish's bones. Other, harder minerals replaced them. The result was a petrified fossil of the fish's skeleton. Sometimes several fossilized fish or other animals are found together. Finding fossils. Millions of years later, Earth's climate has changed and portions of the ocean have dried up. Earthquakes altered the landscape, bringing deep layers of rock to the surface. Rocks that were once at the bottom of an ocean are now pushed up to form a mountain range. Present-day paleontologists excavating a California hillside are thrilled. They find the perfectly preserved skeleton of the fish that sank to the bottom of the sea all those years ago. Lost in time. We learn a lot about extinct animals and plants by studying their fossils. By examining dinosaur fossils, scientists have learned how large these reptiles were and how they walked. They also discovered what dinosaurs ate and what their skin texture was like. Is it possible to find out this much about every animal that lived during prehistoric times? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Tracks can tell us how an animal walked and how fast it moved. Without a trace, it is not easy to become a fossil and many animals never get the chance. Fossils are usually, though not always, the preserved hard parts of an animal, its bones, teeth, or shell. Soft-bodied animals such as slugs, worms, jellyfish, and octopuses have no hard parts to leave behind. Most of these animals have vanished from Earth's history without a trace. There are more than 1,500 species of jellyfish. Animals such as jellyfish have no hard parts that can fossilize. Even well-preserved skeletons are rarely complete. Scientists use clues from similar fossils to learn about missing pieces. Even animals with bones do not always become fossils. To become a fossil, the body must be covered up very quickly after death. In most cases, that doesn't happen. After an animal dies, another animal may eat its body. Its bones may be chewed up or scattered. The animal's body may also decompose or rot. There are many extinct animals and plants we will never know about because they didn't leave fossils behind. <laughs>